and welcome. Uh, I'd like to give my views on the uh, recent uh, uh, sort of a press conference, if you like, of Sean Strickland. Uh, that was uh, in part uh, to Duplass. Uh, now, we know that um, Strickland, he lost that fight, uh, unfortunately for him. Uh, but prior to that fight, there was a controversial uh, press conference. Before I go into that press conference, I'd like to go on to something even more important, which really sort of like personifies that clash of the uh, press conference. So we need to go back to George Orwell's 1984 and the whole concept of Newspeak. Anyone who hasn't read George Orwell's 1984, I'd strongly advise them to do so. <clears throat> 1984, the last two letters uh, are reversed. He wrote the book in 1948, George Orwell, and it gives you a beautiful uh, blueprint as to what governments uh, and so-called elites try to do to their citizens. Now, this was something which was observed by Orwell during the uh, Second World War. Um, if we read it, uh, you, give, you get an idea what I'm talking about. So, uh, to meet the ideological requirements of uh, the government, if you like, the party created Newspeak, which is a controlled language of simplified grammar and limited vocabulary designed to limit a person's ability for critical thinking, and thus the person's ability to articulate abstract concepts such as personal identity, self-expression, and free will, which are thought crimes acts of personal independence that contradict ideological orthodoxy of insoc collectivism now this is what's going on at the moment okay in regards to we're all being corralled into thinking in a certain way now <clears throat> Orwell goes a bit deeper on this in regards to the control of thinking uh, when he talks about double think let's go through it to know and not to know, to be conscious of complete truthfulness while telling carefully constructed lies, to hold simultaneously two opinions which cancelled out, knowing them to be contradictory and believing in both of them, to use logic against logic, to repudiate morality while laying claim to it, to believe that democracy was impossible and that the party was the guardian of democracy to forget whatever it was necessary to forget then draw it back into the memory again at the moment when it was needed and then promptly to forget it again and above all to apply the same process to the process itself that was the ultimate subtlety consciously to induce unconsciousness and then once again to become unconscious of the act of hypnosis that you had just performed even to understand the word double think involved the use of double think now if that seems to you like gobbledygook think back to the time when Keir Starmer was asked what is a woman he had great difficulty giving an explanation because he was put on the spot where he was holding double think in regards to what a woman was, is. It's difficulty in saying it. Now, when the reporter, uh, you'll see this uh, uh, play out, this clash of the double think, this clash of that power trying to crawl uh, thinking. And they're doing it on, you could say, influencers, uh, people who would have a, a, a fan base uh, who this elite would like to indoctrinate, okay? And so you go after these influencers, and if they're on side, then they're great. And if they're not, well, they go the way of Andrew Tate, they will go the way of Russell Brand and Savita, okay? So let's, let's go and get into this. As, you know, you're in Toronto. Welcome. Glad to hear it. It's been great. Are you Canadian? Uh, of course I am. Are you part of the fucking opposition? Are uh, you? Uh, I don't know how to phrase that. You? I mean, you got like... Can, uh, yeah. Well, I did want to ask you. Did you vote for Trudeau? Uh, you know, I'm not going to say. And, and so, you know, he doesn't want to... The reporter doesn't want to uh, 
confirm or admit that he's a part of that sort of agenda of pushing in and corralling the individuals and the masses into a certain way of thinking, okay? And you notice that, Sean, he pushes back on it immediately. He knows he's trying to force him into a corner, okay, to say things, to create like a double thing, really, to say things which he doesn't believe in, simply because he's being corralled into doing so. And Sean, at this point, is just not doing it. And let me tell you something right now, if a man says he's not going to say, like, if you ask him, well, did you vote for Biden? He's like, well, I'm not going to say that's none of your business. He voted for fucking Biden. Sean, so, I'm, hey. Sean, I'm glad you had great experience. So this is, our, this is what I'm talking about, you guys, the enemy, the enemy of Canada. All right. So that's got to be, it's got to be. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive game. And that's interesting because he's saying about, you know, the reporter is the enemy and the enemy of Canada. And in all honesty, I think a lot of us believe this to be the case. You know, we are questioning to ourselves, what is going on here? You know, we're literally being gaslit. And the reason why we feel we're being gaslit is because people like Sean, when they're usually asked these questions, okay, will just go into the uh, uh, the prescripted narrative, which they feel they can say, because they won't get a backlash, not from their fan base, but from the powers that be. In lesbian community in this city, I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think I'd... Oh, like another, another, another I'm saying in the swamp, you guys, a swamp. You become a champion, you become a star, and then someone says... Let me ask you something. Are you, are you, are you gay? No, are you, are, 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 are you, let me know, are you gay? Now, this is a classic. <laughs> if anyone remembers the, uh, that, uh, the Ugandan, uh, interview reporter, who says, are you gay? Are you gay? <laughs> this is the Canadian version of it, I suppose. Okay, can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking, I'm, this is a part of, are you, are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. If you had a son, then he was like, you know, you had a son, he was gay. What does that mean? I'm an ally of the community. I mean, that's quite sort of, you know, what, what, what exactly is that? Hey, you'd be like, oh man, you don't, you don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh man, well, you, dude, you're a weak fucking man, dude. You're like, you're part of the fucking problem. You elected Justin Trudeau, like, with you fucking, when he sees the bank accounts, like, you're just fucking pathetic. And and the fact that the fact that you have no fucking backbone, and and as he shut down your fucking country and sees bank accounts, you ask him some stupid shit like that. Go fuck yourself. Move the fuck on, man. No, that doesn't really answer the question. Yeah, he he. Yeah, Sean has said a lot here, and a lot of it obviously has been. Uh, uh, sort of uh, preempted and uh, assumed about the reporter, but he knows where the reporter is coming from. He knows the the mindset of the reporter. He knows what the reporter is doing, and he's just pushing right back on it, as we, as you can see for yourself. Okay. But I did want to ask also the things you said about the trans community. You said uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that. You go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when uh, when they know what and they'll we'll know what they stand for. Are you this guy's like that? Nah, this Canadian about that Canadian. Are you still going to use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. Here's the thing about Bud Light. Ten years ago, to be trans. In a way, it's like a mini little threat. What the report is doing here is saying, "Hey, we want to get the money and the riches what you got, you know." There are sponsors, and if you don't tow the party line, we are going to try and get those sponsors to squeeze you out. So be careful what you say. That's that's the subtlety of what that report is doing. Was a, a mental fucking illness, and now all of a sudden, people like you have fucking weaselled your way in the world. You are you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of fucking you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not buying your fucking bullshit and your fucking peddling. The world is not saying, you know what? You're right. Fucking chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. Now, this is what I love. Because he's saying that, you know, the world is not buying. And it's true. Because we are being, in some respects, gaslit on certain things. And uh, whenever there's a situation where 
opinions are to be given, like, you know, comments and stuff like that below, uh, you will find that all the comments tend to be in favour, if you like, of what we would call general common sense. And so whenever that is a situation where the narrative is going to be challenged, usually you'll find that they will take the comments out. The comments will be <laughs> taken out. Yeah. And so this is where you know this is where he's going on this. Now his talk about the trans situation is is I find very interesting. I don't want my kids being taught about you know who they could fuck in school. I don't want my kids being taught about who, you know their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy is a fucking enemy. Uh, you want to look at the fucking enemy to our world? It's that motherfucker right there asking these stupid fucking questions. Sorry, I'm, I I told the UFC I was being nicer. Lance, Lance, am I am I still good with this? Am I did I cross any lines? A little. What the fuck? I didn't say the f word. You just brought. Oh well, he's uh, said quite enough now, hasn't he? He said quite enough now. This fucking guy in here pissed me off. You, you just did, but uh, just to follow up, I mean, Rick, wait, did I wait? Did I say the? Did I say it? Okay, so uh, let's go in a little slightly deeper. Smoking. Me myself, I don't smoke cigarettes. I find it quite. It's not a habit of mine. I don't like it. Do you like people smoke? Maybe you're a smoker. Yeah? Um, in this country, they've banned smoking. Literally, in terms of you can't smoke indoors even. You can't smoke in so-called public places. You go in certain public places and they say you can't smoke, you know, even if you're outside near the premises. Uh, because all of a sudden, this smoking is some massive, great big danger sort of demonized and uh, alienated uh, smokers. Now, I wouldn't, for one moment, judge an individual based on the fact that they're a smoker. I don't smoke. I don't like smoking. I don't like it within my vicinity. I don't like it blown in my face. But I would not judge someone's faculty, judge someone's character or their personality based solely on the fact that they are smoking okay what am i getting at i'm getting at this phobia a phobia is an overwhelming and deliberating fear of an object place situation feeling or animal phobias are more pronounced than fears they develop when a person has an exaggerated or unrealistic sense of danger about a situation or object. Now, smoking, you could say, and not liking smoking, you could say, you know, smokophobic, if you like, because, you know, there is a danger that you could get lung cancer if you're in within the vicinity for a long and extended period of time, etc. Uh, those questions figures are quite debatable but the point what I'm trying to make is that it's about an irrational overwhelming debilitating fear of an object place situation feeling or animal now whenever you push back against the the minority the LBGQT type minority okay uh, you are classified as being homophobic transphobic uh, it's, it's wrong it's absolutely wrong. This is where the Orwellian double think new speak comes into it. Because what they're literally trying to say is, grammatically speaking, you cannot oppose what is being promoted. Okay? Because if you voice that, it is grammatically, politically incorrect to do so. And so therefore you are an enemy. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a like, you know, it's no longer, you know, do you believe in God or don't you believe in God? It's the very fact that if you say that you believe in God, makes you a non-person within the so-called elites, for example, excuse me, that, that side of it. So if you oppose this sort of stuff, you know, where uh, perhaps they're bringing this type of ideology into uh, children, and you might say, well, I don't really want my children to be exposed to that. I don't want my children 
to be speaking about these types of subjects at this age group is not really appropriate. And the pushback you're getting and you will receive will be way overwhelming and out of control. Uh, and we all know the reality of it. And the reality is that sometimes when some people transition, it goes horribly wrong. You're, you know, you're, on the one hand, you've got governments clamping down on female genital mutilation. And on the other hand, they're saying, as a 12-year-old, you're perfectly, you know, copus mentors to make the decision to do your own FGM. Yeah? If you, you know, if you decide that you want your, you know, penis removed or your breast removed, etc., because you think you're of another sex, then that would be perfectly okay. But if you're doing it for some sort of a community, sort of hundred year type tradition, that's not okay. It's strange, it's a strange world we live in. Now, uh, I was watching a, a video on people were asking, or interviews were asking people on certain things in terms of uh, percentages of certain people, members of a community. And they asked people how many uh, uh, homosexuals they believed there were in society at large, in the community. And there were all types of answers. Uh, which were quite interesting, which ranged from around 10% to, uh, 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 strangely, 60%. Some women thought 60% of the population were homosexual, okay, or LBGQ type uh, situation. But I think the average worked out to be around 15%. Well, the reality is substantially lower than that you know the reality is it's like it's under it's about one and a half percent of the population which actually confirm this to themselves and, and and are this but their influence overshadows the reality of the position within society i think that although uh, sean strickland uh, lost his fight against Duplass, he certainly in my eyes, won the argument to that reporter. In my eyes, he was brilliant. He, he said it as it is. And he actually said that he doesn't hate gays and doesn't hate homosexuals and stuff. He hates the idea of how it's being pushed into people and it's being politicised in such a way that if you speak anything against it, you are virtually non-personed and it's not right. We should have freedom of expression and you should have the ability to say uh, that which you believe in without without severe repercussions. So that's it, really. That's all I'm uh, doing on that one.